Extreme Collectibles here with another unboxing and review. Aren't you excited it's an unboxing? So I've slowly slipped to the dark side, but I will not do it completely. You're not going to see me physically take it out of the box. However, for all of you that want to get your jollies on, I did take some pictures of what it looked like right when I was opening the box. So stay tuned and I will show those. Extreme Collectibles here with Sideshow's X23 Premium Format Exclusive. As I said in the intro, we're going to do an unboxing and a review. So let's go ahead and get that started. For those of you that really want to see what it looks like, here's a picture of it right out of the box. You can see the beautiful styrofoam next to the wonderful art box, even though the art box is just going into the Indiana Jones warehouse. And then here is a close-up of what it looks inside. You can see everything. You can see the base. The piece that comes out of the base, her body, her two portraits, and another piece, and her two arms. I hope you enjoyed that. So let's put it together, and I'm gonna have to do it sitting down because uh, whoever can say it first uh, gets a point. Kind of share my initial thoughts too because I never know what to say during unboxing. First of all, there's styrofoam everywhere on here. I'll have to clean that off. It's heavy, much heavier than uh, Wolverine. And I'll do pictures of Wolverine next to her at the end. Lots of styrofoam. Sentinel hand, same design. Number 774, wow, that's a lot of. And let's do our body next. Slowly here. Ooh, her uh, talons from her feet are actually pretty sharp. They've cut through the uh, plastic. I'm trying to think, how often do you guys get injured when you're unboxing statues or moving them? I do quite often. All right, so I don't even know. Oh, she keys in right here. Look at this white shit everywhere. This is bad. That probably sounded good on the mic. All right. So the tentacle which she probably keys into the top of this. Slides right in, hopefully. It doesn't always slide right in. Sometimes it takes some effort depending on, you know, their previous experience. Some of you got what I just said there. Here's the rest of the tentacle. You know, interestingly enough, it seems like Sideshow's doing this more, not just Sideshow, but everybody's doing it more and more, uh, where the piece keys into another piece that keys into the base. I think uh, XM's Dark Phoenix was like that when I put it together. Uh, Thor, Brimstone. Really makes you wonder over time what's going to happen to these. And this, probably put her on first. Usually this is easier to assemble when uh, someone's not watching you. So it definitely keys right in there. I don't watch the uh, sideshow unboxings anymore since Susan's gone. That's kind of neat how it works in. Kind of wraps around her. I like that a lot actually. So people have been raving about this piece saying it's the best, it's even better than Rogue and I thought Rogue was great. It's so funny how they're hit and miss like that. So pretty easy to assemble. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces plus the additional portrait if you have the exclusive. And then we will start with the exclusive. Her hair is all over the place. I'm going to be surprised if there's not any breakages. Doesn't appear to be, which is kind of nice. Her head's pretty heavy. All right. So that's it, that quick assembly. So I'm gonna push pause for a second because I need to get this white styrofoam shit. It's everywhere, it's all over the statue, it's all over me. 
Uh, let me get uh, this white shit off of me. That's what she said. And uh, we'll do the review. On to the review. So uh, you were truly getting my first thoughts on this piece. I put it together pretty fast. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what uh, it actually develops from. So first of all, this is Sideshow Collectibles X23 Premium Format. Premium format, Sideshow, is, is that's, their, that's the manufacturer and the distributor. That's their fancy words for quarter scale. So it's one fourth the size of what it would be like in real life. Uh, the scale on X23 looks accurate. The Sentinel hand, not even close. This one looks quite a bit bigger than the Wolverine premium format. I'll put them side by side at the end here. There was uh, 3,750 of these made. They made uh, 1,250 of those were the exclusive. The only difference between the exclusive and the regular is all of them come with this, unma or this unmasked portrait that you see right here. And then the exclusive, the 1250 of them, come with this masked portrait. The exclusive uh, retail, I think, 15 bucks more than the collectors. It was 590 of them, or $590 for, or, and like I said, 1250 the exclusive, 2500 of the collectors. Plus shipping, I don't even I don't even look at shipping anymore. How sad is that? It's somewhere between thirty and eight hundred dollars on all statues apparently. I purchased her because I have two other custom dioramas with X23 in it. I have the uh, Logan uh, motorcycle one and the salt and pepper uh, diorama. Let's actually here's a picture of all of them together. So this is in the future. I don't know what this looks like, but this is how I'm gonna display it once I get X23 down there. Hopefully it looks good. So obviously this is a companion piece to Sideshow's Wolverine Premium Format, which I want to say came out about a year ago. And I'm hoping they're going to look great together. Uh, you just saw them. I haven't seen it yet. Really excited about that. I wasn't going to buy her, but I thought it's just such a great companion piece. And I think Wolverine Premium Format, the newer one on the Sentinel hand that we're talking about, is one of the best Sideshow pieces to date. Not the best, but one of the best. So that's why I purchased her. I'm pretty excited. I'm not sure if I'm digging this portrait yet. I'll have to look at the other one. I might like the collector's portrait better. I think I do. But uh, you guys saw the assembly. Let's do some dimensions really quick. It's interesting because I'm doing the assembly uh, on camera. It's a little over 24 inches tall and a little over 10 inches wide and probably 11 inches deep for exact measurements go to Sideshow's website. Because I'm doing it on camera, I don't really need to talk about anything. Uh, everything went in really smooth. I'm just hoping there's no lean issues in the future. But uh, yeah, so that's essentially the background info, I guess. Let's talk about the concept and design of the piece. So if you don't know who X-23 is, uh, she's essentially Wolverine's daughter, uh, so to speak, and uh, if you, her powers are very similar to Wolverine. So actually, here's a clip from Logan that kind of showcases her powers, and it's just such an awesome clip. I love that clip, any reason to show it. And this piece right here, the concept is the big uh, latest rage with all the statues, both custom and licensed, is uh, Sentinel versus X-Men. So starting at the bottom, she has a Sentinel hand that she kind of tore to shit. And what's interesting about this, we're gonna talk about it a little more, but there seems to be rocks flying out of the hand, which I understand it's on a rock base, just like Wolverine and most other Sentinel hands. It looks like it's a different color than Wolverine, but the Sentinel hand has a tentacle coming out of the palm, which they do, and it's grabbing onto X-23 and she's jumping in the air, uh, ready to smash it some more. I don't see too many scratch marks on this. Oh yeah, there are. There's plenty of scratch marks on the Sentinel hand, but she's in an action dynamic pose. She's pissed. She's ready to take it out. She's in her uh, X-Men costume, her, her traditional X-23 costume. 
She has all of her claws out, both, both of her feet and her hands. Very, very cool. Uh, Design-wise, I like it a lot. I think they uh, pulled it off magnificently. It looks like one flowing piece. It looks like she's jumping in the air. So a lot of engineering. Um, no gaps. They were very clever on where to uh, put the assembled pieces together. You do, do see a little bit of her uh, uh, key peg right here sticking out, which is probably better to have more than uh, not enough so it doesn't fall over. Yeah, it's sticking out quite a bit. Here's a close-up picture. Maybe mine just isn't in all the way. Someone comment if they have it. So, cool concept, cool design. The one thing, and I have the same criticism on my Wolverine, uh, and I have done a review on that, this, this hand is too small. This is a little bit bigger than my hand, but this is not one-fourth scale. A Sentinel hand is quite a bit bigger than this. I um, think they're on the right track because it does look bigger than Wolverine's, but uh, definitely missed it. So let's dive into the paint and sculpt right now, which uh, again, it looks like kind of a spoiler. I think Sideshow knocked it out of the park. I think they really did, and we'll, we'll review both heads as well. But starting at the base here, so first it's on kind of a rocky platform on the bottom, and you don't see much of it, uh, mainly in the back and on the right side. And it looks good. There's some good texture and some good colorization. Not only did they use traditional grays, but there's some browns mixed in there and different shades of, of gray. I like the texture on it a lot. And then there's a few other rocks here that are attached to the sentinel fingers, so almost like the rocks are flying out everywhere. I, I think almost too much rock. It kind of looks stupid when you look at it too much. One or two would have been neat, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine flying all over the place. Then on the sentinel hand, again, a lot of scratches. I didn't see them at first, so she's definitely torn them up. It's two scratches and they have this uh, worn look with the silver around it uh, to show that it was scratched. The different colors on the sentinel is kind of this bluish where I think Wolverine's a little different color of blue his sentinel hand, but there's a lot of black faded in there for, for some good wear. But great sculpt on the hand, very robotic. You can see the nuts and bolts uh, and the different joints. And then even some screws, kind of the working mechanisms on the back again. They show it really worn, it looks oily, almost like it would the inside of a machine. And then the tentacle I think looks fantastic. Again, there's some scratches from X-23, kind of has this coil effect going all the way up to uh, whatever pincer or claw or whatever you want to call that on the end. Base is really, really cool on this. I like it a lot. And then starting at X-23, so first she's got these uh, cool traction boots on. Lots of uh, uh, traction on the bottom. Lots of tread. And then kind of this leather layering on her boots with some uh, texturized material on top of it. It almost looks like a mix between black and green. Cool design, and I like the straps that have X's on them on our boots that go all the way up. And then here you see the uh, claws. They are real metal. It's very sharp, actually, very, very sharp. Great design, great job on that. Then looking at her pants, uh, first, not a lot of definition underneath it under her muscle, but she's very athletic, very lean, so that makes sense. But there's some cool seam lines and some folds to show she's in this action dynamic pose. And there's not much texture on the black-blue part, but there is on the yellow part on the side. That's consistent with her whole costume, and it's kind of yellow-orange mixed in together. But good anatomy. Sideshow's been killing it with the females lately. And even uh, on some of the yellow, there's some black uh, fading to show she's in a battle. Which I think that's a big um, sin. A lot of times they have these people, whether it's a diorama between two different characters or them fighting a sentinel, and, and the, uh, the hero is completely clean. I guess they've never worked in, in real life. I get dirty sitting at a desk. I think I commented that on another video before. But uh, back to X-23. So here's her ass. Good ass shot even though you shouldn't be looking at a statue's ass when she's underage. And then her belt, really good job on her belt. It's uh, leather, has the stitching uh, on the top and bottom of it, just solid black color, Inter uh, goes through the belt loops. The paint job's really good. It's really crisp, very clear. 
And then she has the X-Men symbol right on the front. And it's, a, it's the opposite colors of Wolverine, I believe. I believe Wolverine's was red. I'll have to look at them side by side on the outside. Again, good job on the factory paint on this. Looking at her torso, again, some cool uh, muscle definition really to show how lean and fit she is. Almost a six pack, but not quite. Then her belly button looks like it goes on forever and good skin tones, really good skin tones on the paint. And that follows all the way around to her back here. On a side note, belly buttons freak me out. Um, not on an attractive woman, but my children's belly button, my belly button, what if something got in there? Anyone else have that phobia? Go ahead and comment if you do. Uh, looking at her, uh, uh, her top, her cover, looks very similar to her pants. Same, same exact things going on. The folds, the texture on the yellow. It's almost a blue blackish color right, right in the middle. And she's got a hell of a rack for being so skinny. And it wraps right around her neck. There's kind of this collar that she has. I wonder how she puts an outfit like that on. I should wear something like that. And then looking at her arms, great definition on her arms, really good sculpt on the anatomy. And it has that same classic uh, skin tones that her stomach had that just flow really well with the statue. No hair in her pits. So she had time to shave it probably with her claws. And then kind of, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, her sleeves. Again, it's weird to have an outfit like this. You'd think they'd always fall down from the uh, bicep down. But uh, a lot of the same. Great texture on that yellow part. Some good folds in it. Some really good sculpt. Her hands up close. Could have been a little bit more definition. I don't know if it's a paint issue or a sculpt issue. And that includes where the claws go in. But when you're mass producing a piece this big, you're surely going to find stuff like that. So, and then moving on to her portrait. So both of her both portraits. We'll look at the masked one first. But her hair is kind of flowing way up, and I'm not a big fan of this hair. It's it's solid black, and it looks like there's a few blue hinges in there, but it just looks like a big mess. I mean, if this hair was let down, she would have hair covering everywhere. So I think it's way too much hair, first of all. I do like the flow of it, but there's not a defined definition in, you know, in the strands. Kind of looks like a blob, almost looks like they skimped on it. And then looking at her portrait right here, again, skin tones look great. Sculpt looks really good. You can see some good definition from her ears, around her nose, on her chin. See the angry expression, some uh, wrinkles above her eyes. And I do like the fact that they made her eyes red with the mask portraits showing she's in rage mode, but it just doesn't look good. Maybe it's the color of red. It's more almost too purpley. And then her shiny mask. This is why I don't, yeah, it's her eyes and her mask is why I don't like the uh, exclusive piece here. But great job on her mouth, the texture around uh, yeah just just the 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 uh, i don't even know what i'm saying because it looks so good it looks like a real human mouth the teeth are sculpted fabulously they're not pearly white clean her teeth look a lot better on this portrait than the other one we're going to look at her tongue some good flesh tones on there and then let's look at her uh, mask or her unmasked portrait here First of all, the expression, I'm not 100% sure on. I, I do like the fact that it's an aggressive expression with her uh, gum showing and her lips curled back. They did a great job with her eyes. You can see her eyebrows on this one. They're not covered by the mask. Good paint job. They're a different color than her hair, which is not always typical. It happens sometimes. Her eyes look okay. They look a little bit like decals if you look too closely at them. But good sneer expression. The sculpt falls it nicely. They maintain the same uh, flesh tones, which obviously you would expect. Be surprised if they didn't. So really funny story. While I was trying to uh, get Wolverine out, I actually did get injured because it's so sharp. They cut the shit out of my uh, middle finger here. Uh, I'm just gonna hold this up here. But uh, so be careful. Also, if I ever sell this to you, make sure you talk to me before you touch the statue that has my blood on it. But here's both of them side by side for you guys.
from the back, they look fantastic. They look really good, actually. I need to look at this guy more often because he's so good. Um, I think Sideshow did a fantastic job with this. They knocked it out of the park. Uh, not their best piece, but one of their best pieces. I hope they continue to do that. Let me know your thoughts on it or any other comments I dropped during the review. Last thing, if you're not a subscriber, because about 50% of the people that watch, 55% of the people that watch are not subscribers, go ahead and subscribe. I drop a new review every one to two days a week. And uh, yeah, this is just great job, Sideshow. Very happy. So thanks so much for watching. Take care.